Hey guys, Olaf here from LZ in Florida. Um, this is a 60 gallon Campbell Hausfeld air compressor. And one reason I'm showing this video quickly is only that, as a quick reminder for everybody, you should drain the water out of your air compressor at least twice a year. So I forgot to do it for the last year and hopefully the light is catching it here. It's a little dark. Um, let's see if I can get it correctly held here. Sorry for the shaky camera. But you, what you can see now is underneath here, uh, it's a little bit dark, you can barely see it. But there's a valve which you can use to actually drain the water out. And I've not done that for a year. And there should not be any water in. But you can see how much water is coming out. And you should drain it all the way out in order to prevent rust and extend the lifetime of your air compressor tank because they're just regular steel from the inside so it's gonna rust with all that water coming out here and I have a water separator even after this but the problem is it gets collected inside the tank in form of water condensation so just let it flow out all the stuff out of your tank and I cut off my air compressor so it does not start and would just ruin the sound of this video but make sure that there's nothing else other than this air coming out and just changing the camera a little bit so you can see actually the valve there that's the butterfly nut and it's only hand tied so once you exceed it and it only shows air coming out, nothing else, you can actually turn it back off and just keep operating your air compressor. So this is how you proper drain the water out of your air compressor. And so again, this is a Camp House Housefield. 60 gallon tank and it was fully charged and now we are dropped down to 90 psi as soon as I kick the switch which I have over here pumping again um, one thing I've done since I'm also a welder I actually hooked up a 50 amp RV plug better known as an RV plug it's a 50 amp connector so I can hook and unhook it as I see fit. Uh, it's a little bit of an overkill but all my welders are running on the 50 amp RV plugs. That makes it a lot easier. I have one of these pretty much on any corner and place in my shop here for simplicity. And so what I can also show you guys part of the setup is it's coming out here Here's my first shutoff valve, which is a ball valve. I can turn it 90 degrees and shut off everything from here on. Here's a quick threaded disconnect, which is just a gasket here in between, so I can unscrew this. After that, I have a hydraulic hose, which is actually rated to 3100 PSI and it's flame resistant. It's a SAE 100R16-12 rated hydraulic hose. I think it is a three quarter inch if I'm correct. Um, yeah, it is. It's a three quarter inch. Oh, let me turn the camera here. So there you can see it. Weather guard three inch, three quarter inch. And so the reason I done that is to disconnect the vibration from the rest of my hoses. And you can see that there are actually two flex hoses running up to the ceiling of the shop's um, ceiling here, which is the garage. And so this is the up run, 
which runs into um, three quarter is it three quarter or is it one inch pipe I think it's one inch pipe actually could be three quarter I think it's three quarter actually so it's three quarter running 20 foot down has two elbows and it's coming back with another 20 foot and then it runs through the second pipe down here over to here where there's another quick disconnect so if I want to do something I can actually unhook this quickly here's my regular water separator there's my pressure adjuster then yep that's a grease gun sorry in the way another shutoff valve a T downspout in this one I also collect every now and then a little bit of water so I have to drain that and stop any corrosion the same as with this one is a water separator and then my air goes right now up to here where there's another T extension um, possible for further runs on this cylinder hood which is a cylinder cap of a welding cylinder actually uh, I think it is 125 gallon cylinder but here is another shutoff valve and it goes with the quick connect over I think it's a Goodyear 250 PSI three quarter working pressure uh, made in the USA oil resistant um, air hose hydraulic hose I think it's a Bose and goes to my wheel and here's my wheel with my 3 h 3 8 inch I believe Anyhow, so this one is another 50 foot on my reel. Let me zoom out so that you guys can see the whole reel. It's just a hand cranking uh, reel, but it does do the job very well. And so that is what I use actually with all my air tools um, from impact wrench over paint guns. And for painting, it is very important that you actually have less water in your system. As less water you have, as less you get in, actually into your paint. And ideally you have pretty much absolute 100% dry air and cold air. So that's why I did the run on the ceiling of my garage with 40 foot. That gives the hot air out of the air compressor enough time to cool down long enough and far enough to hit my water separator. Where it actually catches then the cold water which drips down in here and collects and right now um, you can't really see there's nothing in it but normally this indicator would go up with the water but I'm draining this very frequently much more often actually than I did the tank which is one thing I have to change get more in the habit of actually draining my tank as as often as I do the rest with the filters here um, this gives me actually a very clean and dry air, this setup. It's very compact, very small spaced um, because of a lot of other tools and cars in my shop. But this gives me what I need. And onto this hose, I can quick connect even an extension if I want to, another 50 feet of some on my truck I can use for that if I need um, to get up all the way up to 100 feet. But normally 25 foot. Um, is doing the job just right for me around here uh, even I think this one is even a 50 feet on the wheel but um, this is pretty much how I set it up all in all I think I spent less than $400 maybe a little bit more on getting the compressor getting the gauge in a better position got all the brass fittings Got the switch off, got pretty much that extension cord here with the glued on plug, the outlet. Um, the outlet is not included in this price because that EMT pipe has a expensive 63 wire in there for 50 amp circuits and that costs around two bucks a foot and that runs across the ceiling of the garage over 40 feet over to my main breaker uh, sub panel which is a 200 amp sub, um, sub panel so that's not included but got this off um, I believe offer up 
So every now and then you can find these half decently priced, slightly used on offer up for like two, three hundred bucks less than the original price. Even this is just a regular one piston style, quiet noisy uh, with a 320 volt, so two phase motor. Uh, stud capacitors are underneath these bulk covers here. And that's pretty much it. And then the rest is just attachments, which I got at big box stores and these hoses. I actually had to buy online on eBay, but you can also get them on my Amazon. Uh, some has a swirl connector on it, but I choose without the swirl. So that's why I have these unions here in place. I think they are called unions on where my thumb is pointing at. So that makes it at least very easy uh, to untwist your flex hoses and um, you can maintain and do service on it quickly. The other reason why I used rubber, um, it's not really rubber, it's a nylon whatnot with metal weaving in it, but this takes out the vibration of the rest of the tubing. So this is pretty much working like a shock absorber. So that's why I have it in because the pressure tank is rattling on the ground. It's not bolted into the ground. It's actually standing on rubber padding. This way it can run on, on its own, doesn't carry any vibration to the ground or anything like that. And sorry again for the shaky camera, but I'm doing this quickly here with my cell phone um, just to show you guys how I set it up to give you guys an idea how to set up in a shop, in your own garage, um, an air compressor proper, especially if you want to do airbrushing, painting, spray painting, or just using your tools. All tools will last a lot longer if you have dry air. So dry air is one of the most important things because where there's no water, there's no rust. So just make sure that you spend that extra money doing it. And the easiest way, and I saw it on a lot of other um, YouTube videos and the ideas are great, but very costly. They use copper tubing, uh, zigzagging on the wall, up and down for a couple feet. That's all nice, but very expensive. So I use just regular three quarter inch steel tubing. I use black steel actually up because they had it in one of the big star box stores on sale um got all the valves the same way um i have still here another quick connect for the quarter inch connector and this, this i think is a three eighths automotive connector which actually lets a lot more air go through and that's what i use also for painting uh, a lot more airflow um, allows you a lot smoother paint better distribution throughout your gun and um, yeah click the like button subscribe for more videos in and around my garage I will show you more about setups I've done why I've done it um, things you can improve on your setups what to look for I'll sh show you all my tools what I'm using from um, HVLP guns I use different guns for different types of paint so primer I have a separate one same for clear same for color uh, actually for color I have multiple different cups so for black and dark colors one cup and for light colors I have another cup um, needle scaler sanding tools um, I'll go through all that over the next couple of weeks with you guys but again thanks for watching and this video is already way too long so Keep doing what you're doing and try not to hurt yourself safety first so get out and fix something like uh, Stephen Cox is saying who's a mechanic uh, is also a youtuber so check out his videos he's doing a lot about his field um, work explaining caterpillar repairs where there's also hydraulic and pneumatic being involved in a lot of ways um, most of his stuff is hydraulic of course but um, it refers to the almost same setups and tools he's using what I'm using um, also like Chucky 2009 which is a welder and promotes welding 
equipment I'm also doing welding equipment myself I'm a fabricator like uh, a couple other guys are on the, on the channels uh, you'll see more about me as the time moves on I just start to set up everything to the point that I can actually also shoot videos and show you guys what I'm doing um, my setup is more like what the Peter Ziller is doing a lot more in a commercial environment where you cannot shoot because you can charge by the hour or you, you have jobs where you're not allowed or permitted to do any video rec uh, video recording like Department of Defense and other government facilities you can simply cannot video and so I can only talk about it uh, to a certain degree and um, so whenever I have a chance I'm gonna do a video show it show it to you guys um, I also have right now a furnace built prepped which I'm gonna start recording tomorrow um, which is Wednesday and then hopefully on Wednesday I'm gonna post the first one it's actually a full barrel being converted into a, a furnace a hot furnace with two jet burners so that you can actually melt bigger amounts of aluminum steel copper even steel down to a liquid form to pour um, so those coming up soon but again guys thanks for watching and stay safe